there. Uh, we're, our diet is an ancestral diet. That puts it in the same family as paleo, primal, uh, the caveman diet, uh, traditional diets, Weston A. Price type diets. Um, for people who have heard of those. Uh, and, you know, so it's basically a natural whole foods diet, uh, but it's uh, highly optimized for best nutrition. And uh, so my wife and I spent seven years of research uh, looking at every known nutrient, f tr figuring out the optimal amount of each, and then figuring out the right mix of whole foods that would uh, produce that. And it turned out to be you know, something that resembles gourmet cuisine. Uh, and then, uh, since then, we've been working on uh, making it uh, very easy, you know, learning how to make it, uh, how to prepare great foods, nutritious foods, delicious foods, uh, simply and easily in our home kitchen. And we're working on a cookbook right now to, uh, to share everything that we've learned and tips on, you know, how to be healthy uh, through good home cooking. Oh, that's, uh, that's brilliant, because that's, you know, that is something I see as a, as a wellness coach uh, dealing with people, is it's, it's, uh, it's easy to, uh, to tell people about macronutrient recommendations and, uh, you know, eating less carbs, eating more, more healthy fats and uh, getting, you know, well-sourced proteins, but sometimes it, uh, it's harder to, to help people actually make that fit into their life, especially when they have other people who aren't quite on the program. Would you have any, any suggestions uh, for, you know, for people who are, um, who are really go are going into this, this healthier lifestyle, but they're still surrounded by less healthy people and how to make those, um, you know, make what they're cooking, um, you know, as attractive to the other people as possible? Yeah, well, I, I think that's an area where our diet really wins compared to a lot of more restrictive uh, paleo type diets because we do recommend eating starches. Uh, we have uh, what we call safe starches that are uh, uh, sources of starch that you know don't have don't cause the same problems that gluten and uh, certain other uh, types of uh, grains and uh, beans can cause. And uh, you know so basically if you're cooking the perfect health diet you can make food that you, know, you can make just about any recipe with ingredient substitutions it will taste great and uh, you, you know so most people uh, if the person in the household who cooks is on our diet and cooks our diet everybody else loves it you know they don't they don't notice any major changes and they get healthy uh, just because uh, you know they're they're eating great food but they don't uh, uh, they don't suffer they don't lose anything Oh, that's that's fantastic. I think I think that's really one of the uh, one of the key key things. I think that we uh, we are in this you know in the whole area of promoting healthy eating and healthy lifestyles. I think that's a great, a really important area that um, we can all develop. So hats off to you and and your wife. I didn't mention her earlier um, because I think you guys are co-authors in this book. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So my wife Sho Cheng is a uh, she's a professional scientist. Uh, but uh, she's made some time available to, uh, uh, to you know, work on our diet and, uh, uh, and especially work on our home cooking and, uh, and our cookbook. So, uh, you know, she's a, she's a major contributor. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, so, Paul, let's change gears a little bit. And uh, I think this is just a transition into um, of course, paleo, primal, and uh, ancestral health is growing, and uh, but there's still a huge amount of, of Americans and you know and people you know outside of America here. I'm in you know I'm in Europe myself, and it's uh, perhaps a little less well known, especially in, in especially in Southern Europe, um, where we've still got the you know some good influence from the Mediterranean, uh, um, and uh, but. How do, how do we make health more mainstream? Yeah, well that's a, that's a major challenge and that's something I'm working on. It's something the Ancestral Health Society is working on. So uh, we started a scholarly journal to reach out to academics and clinicians, doctors and health coaches. Uh, and that's the, called the Journal of Evolution and Health. 
Uh, and so we're trying to help gather uh, data about how uh, ancestral diets and ancestral lifestyles work to improve health and spread the word. Um, uh, the Ancestral Health Society sponsors a symposium annually uh, in order to spread the word and uh, you know there's lots of activities uh, going on you know of course you know you mentioned bloggers like Mark Sisson, myself, uh, Rob Wolf, many others, Chris Presser um, you know who do great work spreading uh, you know very valuable information about how to be healthy uh, through ancestral living um, you know so I think you know I, I think the movement has really grown because of grassroots uh, viral growth you know people had good results themselves and told their friends and family uh, and you know so that's how we've grown you know but it's helped that we've had good information out there and uh, you know I think we just have to keep working because it's really, uh, you know, the environment makes it difficult to be healthy. Uh, you know, so the easiest way to eat is just to pull industrial packaged foods off the shelf or to eat, uh, you know, fast foods or restaurant foods that were made with cheap ingredients that aren't healthy. And, uh, uh, you know, so the easy way to go is an unhealthy way. And, you know, in order to be motivated to, uh, you know, eat more healthfully, to live more healthfully, you know, people really have to learn and understand in order to get the motivation to put in the effort. And, uh, you know, so we have to learn how to make things easier for people. Uh, and we're working on that. Uh, but, uh, you know, we also have to communicate great benefits that people can enjoy. You know, years on their lifespan, uh, much better health, uh, you know, better mood and you know, enjoyment out of life. Uh, you know, it's it's worth the small investment that you have to make, but uh, it, you know, there is an investment. Yes, no question. You know, I one of the things that I have I have seen in uh, a lot of a lot of uh, both you know both uh, coaching clients as well as friends and family that have act, that have done sort of uh, done our you know our program here and gotten healthy and is that they've told me you know they, they had tried the the old you know the traditional way which is uh, which you know they'll eat less and exercise more and uh, cut your fat down to the minimum and of course we all you know we in this in this area we know that doesn't work we know that it goes against our whole genetic uh, you know uh, genetic prototype um, or human prototype or whatever that that uh, might be and uh, and so they tell me you know I, I didn't know I could feel this good and uh, so yeah. I often try to I often think that's one of the things that imme the, one of the quickest benefits people can get uh, let's talk about that what are some of the short-term benefits in your experience to, to to go taking up this lifestyle oh well we've got some good experience with with short-term benefits because uh, uh, we started operating a health retreat last year uh, on the beach in North Carolina, so it's a, you know, it's a luxurious, beautiful setting. Uh, but the point of it is, we teach, you know, because there's so many aspects to diet and lifestyle. You know, there's really hundreds of things to learn, and it's really hard to learn them all from books, and it's hard to communicate them. You know, but if you get the opportunity to live all those aspects, you know, have someone control the environment. You know, show you what a good environment is, show you a good lifestyle. Uh, you know, show you good food, it's much easier to learn everything. And we found that when people are, come to our retreats, you know, probably the things they notice first are better sleep, more energy, improved mood. Um, they tend to start losing weight very quickly if they're overweight. Uh, if they're underweight, they gain weight. Um, you know, but I would say sleep, mood, energy are the first things that people notice. Right. That's yeah. That's great to know. Yeah. That's I have seen seen very similar uh, very similar results uh, also. And um, so sleep, mood, and energy. I mean, who would who wouldn't want that? But, <laughs> but you know, if we if we compare that to what people get from you know the the traditional mass market weight loss industry, which which I used to work in um, when I when I got into this in the early 90s, that was part of what I was doing, working with a big hospital based wellness center, uh, 
and uh, we had the uh, we had a this medical fasting program that was uh, that then added you know then um, gave got people into into the the whole low carb thing for life not low carb but low fat I'm sorry and uh, of course the the uh, success rates were next to nothing you know but no one ever talked about that so uh, you know once again great to, this is great we're getting some good results for people let's you know let's talk about your retreats a little bit because that's that's a fascinating topic and um, how did you uh, how did you guys decide to do that and um, well we got into it uh, the there was a fellow in Austin, Texas, who had a 14-bedroom uh, property that he was having trouble filling, and he had adopted our diet and lost 75 pounds, and uh, um, and he reached out to me and said, "Well, you know, would you like to try bringing people here and seeing if uh, you know?" He was also a professional chef, and uh, you know, thought he could, uh, you know, give them a good. Perfect health diet experience, and uh, you know, so we we decided to do a little experiment, and you know, we did a six month experiment, and uh, and uh, people had really good results, and uh, uh, and anyway, so we we decided uh, that wasn't quite the right property partnership structure uh, to do it in, so uh, we ended up moving the retreat business to North Carolina and putting it on the beach. And uh, and doing uh, a series of events, and uh, uh, so that uh, works much better. And I, I now do health coaching uh, for people before the retreat and afterward if they agree to share their health outcomes. So we're tracking oh, uh, the people who have come to our retreats, and you know we try to help them through if they have any uh, difficulties after they get get back home. Uh, you know, we try to help them troubleshoot. So, uh, you know, we're, we're really hoping to use these as an opportunity to prove that an ancestral diet and lifestyle can really heal. And um, and we've had a diversity of health conditions come through. Uh, you know, we've had uh, people who have had cancer. We've had you know people with diabetes, people with chronic fatigue, people with you know needing knee replacements and hip replacements, arthritis. Uh, and you know we've seen everyone has seen good results so um, you know we're optimistic as we get you know more and more people through we'll have some you know really good uh, data and stories and uh, you know some of the people in the in the vegan and the low-fat movement got a lot of mileage when they started up you know some uh, uh, centers like this in the 1960s uh, you know, so there was the there was the Kempner, you know, uh, rice diet program at Duke, yeah. and there was uh, Nathan Pritikin's longevity center, and some others. And uh, you know, they published some papers, you know, claiming success against heart disease. And uh, you know, I think our our diet and program is much much healthier than theirs. And uh, you know, I'm optimistic that as time goes by, we can generate some really positive results. And uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, persuade uh, the you know the medical community that, uh, that you know this is a really a much much better approach than anything they're doing right now. Yeah, fantastic. Um, well, now, what as far as your retreats? What this is? You've done two years now, or three years, or how many? Um, well, with the we we did a pilot test in Texas in right. 2013, and then. Uh, and then I basically restarted the business in North Carolina in 2014 uh, with uh, uh, my partner Whitney Ross Gray, who uh, uh, has cured her multiple sclerosis with an ancestral diet. Uh, you know, so she started on uh, uh, basically Rob Wolf's paleo, and then migrated to PhD, and. Uh, uh, you know, so she, you know, her story is very similar to Terry Walls, if you've heard of uh, yes, Terry yeah, Walls. Yes, yeah, Dr. Walls, yes. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, so we're, uh, uh, you know, we're very happy with the retreats and very excited about the health results people have gotten. And uh, uh, right now we're doing them twice a year, May and October. And uh, doing them occasionally uh, gives us the opportunity to 
uh, you know, bring a bunch of people together, make them a social event, and uh, uh, and the weather and the ocean are beautiful that time of year down there. Uh, it also doing them occasionally gives gives me the opportunity to do health coaching before and after the retreat to the yes. person. So, uh, uh, you know, I think it's a it's a really good arrangement for what we're trying to achieve, and um, um, and if anyone's interested, we had uh, our most recent retreat in October. Uh, we had one person from Sweden, one from Norway, one from India, and one from Korea. So people do travel. Wow! And, so uh, international. So you've got an international uh, clientele. That's right. Well, we have an international blog audience, and that's right. Uh, right. Uh, mostly, what is what has drawn people to the retreat? Yeah, fantastic. Well, I've got uh, offhand at least a half dozen people um, who are actually within. Um, Wow, they're within probably a probably a day's drive uh, or less, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to mention this to them for people that want to to find out more about the about the retreats. Uh, I usually ask people at the end of the interview, but let's go ahead and put this out there. What's the best uh, website to uh, to to get more information? Yeah, well, go to go to my blog perfecthealthdiet.com, and there's a tab that says Perfect Health Retreat. And uh, right now that goes to a bunch of pages on, on the Perfect Health Diet site, but we'll have a Perfect Health Retreat site uh, that's under construction at the moment, And you know, but the tab will always lead to the right place. Yeah, fantastic. So, Paul, for folks out there uh, you know, who are maybe looking at, uh, at, at making this, at doing a retreat, uh, what, uh, or they're you know, considering, obviously, it's an investment, uh, what are some of the advantages um, that uh, you know, I'm sure there's group. There's a group psychology element. I'm sure there's an there's other elements. But from your perspective, what are some of the things that uh, that you guys do that uh, you know would be wor- make it worthwhile for someone to uh, you know maybe forego their cruise vacation where most people gain fat <laughs> yeah. and go do you know spend their vacation <laughs> time with you know with you guys. Yeah, well, it is a fantastic vacation as well as a great education, you know. So we're on a luxury property. We've got it's right on the beach, one of the most magnificent beaches in the U.S. Uh, you know, half the rooms are ocean-facing with a balcony and uh, uh, you know glass doors, and you hear the waves at night. Uh, we've got two hot tubs, two heated pools. Uh, we've got. Uh, a chef who has worked for um, uh, Hollywood stars and uh, rock musicians was a private chef to REM and other uh, oh, great. bands and so on. Uh, you know, so the, the food is delicious. But the most important thing is, you know, we have a great educational program, and uh, it's not just about diet and nutrition; it's about lifestyle. Uh, we teach exercise and movement. Uh, we have uh, two activity classes, late morning, late afternoon, and then we have other movement classes, early morning, late night, that are about relaxation, healing, stress relief, preparing yourself for the day. Uh, we have a science class every day to motivate everything. We have cooking classes before every meal, so you know we'll teach you how to prepare food. Uh, we do the health coaching. Um, you know, and then there's ample free time to enjoy the beach and the hot tubs and uh, and you know the other guests, and you know so it's it's really it's a comprehensive education and how to be healthy for the rest of your life, and uh, it's really uh, you know I think it's a you know it's a tremendous bargain. It's a, uh, it's, it's something you really can't uh, replicate elsewhere, and it's really. Uh, you know, it's a one-week program. You know, the cost is you know what you would spend for, you know, a luxurious one-week vacation. You know, but you get all of the health benefits. You know, thrown in for free, and you know, time with me, time with my wife, time with. You know, we have a, a staff of eleven. You know, we have uh, uh, personal trainers you can work with, and uh, 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 registered dietitian Laura Schoenfeld. Um, you know, there's lots of. Uh, Opportunities to uh, uh, you know to learn and to improve your own health. Very uh, very interesting stuff, um, Paul. For 
Um, one of the things uh, I'm sure you've you've got to, you know many many tools in your in your toolbox, uh, if you will. But uh, let's uh, let's just touch on stress for a moment. Uh, for for someone who is um, who's dealing with uh, stress, who's listening to this right now, and you know maybe they are maybe they're already starting to eat better. They're doing the exercise. Uh, but uh, you know, as, as you and I know, if you've got the, the fight or flight um, you know mechanism going, we've got all that cortisol, we've got the adrenaline going, and that's gonna it's gonna make it very hard to get good results despite uh, despite eating well and exercising. What would be a couple of any any suggestions you found especially helpful? Yeah, well, I, so the first thing I would say is you know do everything that helps, helps you become healthy because being unhealthy is stressful in itself. Being healthy gives you a greater capability to, to deal with stress and handle it. Um, you know, so that's number one. Um, you know, I would say eat something like the Perfect Health Diet, which is very good for gut flora uh, because the gut microbiome has complex interactions with mood and stress and the nervous system and, uh, and the immune system. and you know, so if you have a good gut flora, that will tend to improve mood and calm you. Uh, and then the next thing I would say is make sure you have a good circadian rhythm to your stressors. All right, so have a daytime and have a nighttime, and put everything that triggers stress for you into the daytime, uh, because daytime is our time for being stressed, for dealing with stress, for being active, yes. uh, and for attacking problems. And nighttime is a time for relaxation. And you really have to focus on de-stressing, you know, not allowing yourself to be stressed at night. You know, so think about all the things you do in the day that do not cause stress and move them to the night. And all the things that do cause stress, move them to the day. All right. And, you know, if you're, if you're fighting with your spouse or loved one, then uh, schedule the arguments for the daytime. Oh, that's and then, great. Yeah. Love one another at night. And, uh... You know, whatever you have to do to uh, organize the stress. So, um, you know, we do have circadian rhythms are very important for our health, and yes. uh, and stress needs to happen on a circadian cycle. And you know, stress in the daytime really isn't that harmful, uh, but stress at night is very harmful. So, uh, you know, you. you uh, as St. Paul said, don't let the sun go down on your anger. You know, if you have anger, let it go, uh, release it. And, you know, so at the retreats, we often do some kind of mindfulness meditation at the start of the evening. Um, and if you also tend to other circadian rhythm elements, uh, they'll help you. So, for instance, one thing we do at home and at the retreats is at the start of evening, we have a, a little sweet dessert and we switch all of the lighting. You know, we turn off all white lights and we turn on orange-red lighting. And so it's a very dim, uh, pleasant, soothing uh, nighttime lighting environment. And that's also very calming. And, uh, you know, so if you tend to all the other aspects of uh, circadian rhythm entrainment, that will help a lot. Um, even you know doing active things in the day, you know like getting exercise in the daytime, helps calm you at night, and helps you sleep better at night. Um, you know, so there's a lot of stress relief things. Uh, you know, because uh, stress to a great extent is a circadian rhythm disruption problem. Yes. Uh, and circadian rhythms are trained by everything you do in the previous 48 hours, and so. Um, you know, if you think about, uh, I have a problem with being stressed tonight, uh, it could be that you didn't do something during the day or the previous day, uh, you know, that would have helped relieve the stress now. You know, so you didn't exercise during the day yesterday, all right, and you're still feeling extra stress tonight because of that. Uh, so uh, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of little things to tend to, but I would say, you know, being healthy, eating a good diet, good nutrition, and in training circadian rhythms and organizing the timing of stress are some straightforward things that just about everybody can do that will greatly reduce the health impact of whatever stress you're experiencing. Well, very good. great advice. In fact, you don't, and you don't hear that very much as far as really focusing on circadian rhythms, but you know, it makes perfect sense because if our sleep is disrupted, 
then it's just a vicious cycle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, bad sleep is a, is a marker for uh, poor health. If, if you're losing sleep, then you're going to be losing other aspects of health, too. So it's very important to tend to those things. Yeah, great advice. Well, well uh, Paul, this has been really wonderful. I think we could, I know we could go on for another hour, but I want to be respectful of your time, and uh, the, the time has just flown by here. Um, so if we were just to, to wrap up, if, um, if we were to offer uh, one, uh, if you were going to offer one piece of advice from everything you've learned um, offhand, and I'm sure that's hard to do, but one thing that comes, to, what would be one thing that comes to mind that uh, people may not be aware of, but could be a small hinge that swings a big door? I would say the you know the biggest leverage is uh, cook at home, learn to cook, uh, because then you're doing two things. One is you're eating natural whole foods. All right, you're not going. You know, the recipe ingredients don't call for cookies and crackers. They, you know they call for plants and meat and, and stuff. So you're, you're eating a natural whole foods diet, and you also when you cook, you're trying to make your food delicious. And our brain evolved to like what's good for us, and uh, you know, so delicious food really tends to be balanced in nutrition, and you know, tends to do a good job of nourishing our bodies, and you know, so just that one lifestyle change of cooking for yourself can really have a huge, you know, that by itself almost fixes all diet problems, and. Uh, you know, so that would be the number one thing, and then number two would probably be the circadian rhythm entrainment things that we talked about, uh, and that I would say create a good home environment uh, and work environment if you can. Um, you know, so you know, what you need to do. You know, people always fail when something requires a lot of work, yes. but if if you adjust the environment so that it's work free, it just happens automatically. You know, then you're you're so much better off. So. And that's a, a relatively straightforward thing you can do. Yeah, oh, I love it. I love it. That's uh, something we try to do a lot of. Uh, in fact, um, there's a Stanford uh, psychologist you probably may know of, him, uh, B.J. Fogg, who does a lot of work in that area about environmental adjustment. And he has a, uh, a, fam a funny story he talked about. He was trying to modify his own uh, uh, cookie-eating habit. And so what he did was he took the cookies physically uh, and he had other people, I, I guess, in his home where they were eating cookies as well. So he, he couldn't just throw them out, I guess. And so what he did is he took them out to the garage, looked for a high, the highest shelf possible, maybe even built the shelf, I don't recall. But he, and he put them there in a place where he would have to literally go find a ladder <laughs> to, <Yeah. laughs> to get the cookies. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, environmental stuff, making it easy is, uh, is really a great, uh, great thing so fantastic well let's let's get just one last time if you would um, for people that want to find you uh, and get more information on your books and your your retreats and your and your blog uh, can you just tell us one more time how to find you yeah come to our website perfecthealthdiet.com and uh, uh, check out the pages under the perfect health retreat tab and uh, uh, check out some of our recipes under the recipes tab and uh, you know, health results. We've got uh, uh, some lists of some of the health conditions people have reported being cured on the Perfect Health Diet, and uh, uh, and feel free to engage me and the other people in our community. So wonderful! Wow, great information, and uh, really uh, look forward to uh, to staying in touch with you and. Uh, and good best of luck with your your next uh, retreat. I guess it's coming up in May, so uh, you still have have some spots open for that one. Yes, we do. Yep. Okay, wonderful. So, so uh, well, well, we'll stay in touch and hope to get you uh, get you on the show again down the road, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be in contact. All right. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. Take care.